Hi everybody, James Earl here today and we're going to be talking about the fractional knapsack problem. Now note that this is actually a variation of just the general knapsack problem because there also exists the integer knapsack problem. So I'll go over the integer knapsack problem in a different video, but for now let's detail what the fractional knapsack problem actually is. So a thief has broken into let's say a jewelry store and he's got a variety of items each with their own you know varying weights and values and he has some maximum capacity for the backpack that he is carrying. So he needs to fill his backpack and find the optimal amount that he can. So for every value in every item, he needs to take as much as he can to try to make as much money as he can. But the big difference with the fractional backpack is that each of these items can be divided. So if he wants to take, say, half of one of these items, he's able to do that. And a good analogy is the integer knapsack problem generally considers uh, gold bars or something like that that you can't really divide. But in this case, we're actually considering gold dust because you can take as much of it as you want and divide it into nearly infinitesimal fractions. So it's up to you to decide how much, but we're going to use pretty simple numbers here. So if we take a look at some of the uh, items I've displayed, items one through four here with their varying v values and their weights we can try to pick you know which one might give us the best uh, value for the weight so we can see that if we take four and then sum of one we'll be able to reach our maximum capacity of 23 with a pretty good value of 24 but this is just a guess kind of kind of looking at these so we have a value of 15 and a weight of 5 once we add that into our bag we only have 18 remaining and our value is currently still set at 15 so if we look at the rest of these we can actually take the one that has the highest value which would be 1 but we don't we would only take 18 20ths of it so we would only be able to increase our value by 18 20ths times 10 which is just the same as 9 so it's just 18 over 20 which is the percentage of that item we're taking times the value and that's how much we can increase our value but we always always try to maximize the weight in the fractional problem because there's no case unless of course you run out of items that you can't just continue taking more of a fraction of the next item unt until the bag is full so this was just kind of an example now we to to really elaborate on what the problem works but now we can uh, we can kind of consider this as a more generic problem so if you have the items 1 to n each of them has their own values and their own weights we're gonna leave those not numeric we're just gonna let them be variables and then we can consider the backpack with its maximum capacity we'll just label M well we don't really know what items to take using some kind of algorithm so before all I did was really just generically look at a few of them and say well this kind of seems okay but in this case we're gonna try to think of some process that's gonna give us the optimal case so there's a few different approaches you could take and you could try to take the highest value first or the lowest weight first or some combination of these properties that each item has but it turns out that the optimal is actually going to be a greedy algorithm that makes use of the largest value to weight ratio. So that is the value per pound. So the most expensive item per pound that it weighs is going to be the optimal. So before we're able to do that, we actually need to prove a few things. So when we're considering dynamic programming, we need to consider optimal substructure but here we also need to consider optimal substructure as well as the greedy choice property. So once we've proven both of those, we can then go on to verify that some greedy algorithm actually does work. So let's take a stab at proving optimal substructure for this problem. If we have some bag here, and we can see that we've got items 1, 2, 3, and then the ith item there I've highlighted in the middle, and then up to the nth item, this would be the list. How can we show that this displays the optimal substructure. Well, if we take some amount of uh, item I and we put it in the bag, well, it's, it's pretty obvious that the remaining bundle must be the most valuable bundle weighing at most M minus K that the thief can take from the original N minus one items plus the remaining WI minus K amount of item I. So what this means is 
of all the items there, if he takes, let's say, half of the ith item, the optimal bundle now that he's taken half is going to be the optimal bundle of if this was your original setup in the first place. So if we consider items 1, 2, 3, up to i, up to n, and if this was your original uh, grouping of items, then the optimal for this is going to be the same as the optimal as if i was what it was previously and you had just taken out k. So quite simply actually optimal substructure is proven. Now we can consider the greedy choice property and this one again is actually a fairly simple proof. So if we were to sort all the items by their value to weight ratios, so every item with the highest value to weight ratio to the lowest value to weight ratio is going to be sorted in a list, we can then pick the first item in that list and we'll say let's let's label it k k is going to be the first item in that list and that item is going to have the highest value to weight ratio so then we can consider some s an optimal solution that maximizes the ma the value that the thief is able to get in his backpack for some amount of every item so now we're actually presented with two cases so if the item k is an element of s then we're actually done. So k is used in s, then we're there's nothing more to be considered because the greedy choice is going to be k and the optimal solution uses the greedy choice. But if we consider that k is not used in s, so the greedy choice is not shown, we can replace the weight of k in s with k itself. So what that means is let's say there's some item j, you can take out the amount of k, so let's say k weighs 5, and you have 15 of some other item j. Well, you can remove 5 of that item j and put in the 5 of your item k, because by definition of k, it's the best item of all of the items, so it's only going to be able to make your solution equally as good, if not better. So what this means is then that given that k is the greedy choice property, including it will always be equally as good or better than not including it. So if there was some other item that had a same value to weight ratio as k, then it would be an equal solution. But in all other cases, it's actually going to improve your solution. And just like that, we're actually done because all we've needed to show is that by choosing k, the greedy choice, we're going to come up with an optimal solution. So now let's come back to our original example. Using the proofs we just did, we can actually consider um, how we might take a stab at this and find the optimal uh, bundle, really. So what we need to do is go through the same steps that were displayed before, and we can kind of come up with a process to actually get the same values every time. So we're always going to reach the optimal. So the first thing we need to do is rearrange all of these based on their value to weight ratios. So I've done that here and you can see that it went from 1, 2, 3, 4 to 4, 2, 1, 3. So you can see that the value weight ratio of item 4 is going to be 3, for item 2 it will be 1, and so on. And now we can take as much of every item as we can until our bag is full or we're out of items. So you can see that the weight of item 4 is actually substantially less than what's remaining in the backpack, so of course we can take all of it. Now we can place that in our bag and we can take a look at the next item. Item 2 has a weight of 5, so and the remaining weight in our backpack is still substantially more than the weight of that item, so we can take all of that item as well. Now we take a look at item number 1, and this is a bit of an interesting case because what, like what happened before with my approximation just by looking at the problem, you can see that we're not going to be able to take all of item 1, but this is a fractional problem, so we're going to be able to take as much of it as we can until the backpack is completely full, so until there is no more space in this. And now that means we can take a percentage. So what we had before was, uh, I think we had 13 remaining, so that means there's going to be weight of 7 remaining. So 13 over 20 times the value is going to give us 6.5. So let's see, our previous value here was 20 and our weight remaining was 13. Now we can add 6.5 to our value 
and we're going to put that in our backpack. So we can see that there still is uh, a quantity of seven of item one remaining, and that still holds some value. But in this case, we've maximized our backpack. There is no more space, and this is an optimal bundle. So the highest value we could have possibly achieved using these four items is 26.5. So now we found our optimal bundle and we can see that these are the remaining items and we're actually done. So this is really all it takes for the fractional knapsack problem. If there's any other uh, questions you may have, feel free to leave them in the comments. But now, in case you're curious about the integer knapsack problem, you can see part two and I'll leave a link to that below in the description. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Take care.